I am Batman. I mean, Average Sniper. Hey, what's up, everybody? Average Sniper here, and uh, welcome to another PUBG video. So, this is basically me reacting to my very first win. Unedited, it's going to be the entire gameplay, and look at this. At the bottom, you can see it says Early Access. The map looks so different. The plane looks different. Everything about this looks different. This is from almost four years ago now. Look at that default skin character I have. So this is the first chicken dinner I ever got on PUBG. And there's not going to be much uh, much game sound. You maybe will be able to hear the bullets, but I had my, a hot mic when I recorded this, and I was actually talking uh, way too much, and I didn't want to spend the whole whole video talking over myself. So uh, you probably won't hear too much in, in uh, terms of game sound. It's going to sound pretty muted. All right, so... Where did I just land? It looks like I landed right outside of Novo here. Oh my God, look at this. Look at these graphics and everything. They're so different. Lots lots of little screen tears too. You can see how far the game has come. Well, honestly, those screen tears are probably from my uh, the cheaper recording equipment I had back four years ago um, before I had so much support from you wonderful people. Oh my God, I'm not even tab looting. I'm like, the biggest noob in the world right here. The menu uh, or the button options look different. Oh, this was before you could put uh, red dot sights on pistols. There's going to be a lot of things you couldn't do. In fact, this was before you could vault over walls and through windows. You couldn't do it. It was not part of the game. If you play on console, you've never known a time when you couldn't do it. But if you play on PC... Uh, it took them about nine months to add in the vault feature. That was one of the features that Xbox uh, actually got first. Uh, they got a more updated version of the game than PC had, but after that, PC pulled ahead with the updates. Um, you had to do this special thing to jump through windows called a crouch jump, a crouch jump. And basically what that entailed was hitting the jump, just like that, hitting the jump and the crouch button at the exact same time. So your character would pull their legs up and you'd be able to jump through windows. But the funny thing was when you did that, the windows wouldn't actually break. They wouldn't, the windows wouldn't break. Let me pull my mic a little closer here. Uh, <laughs> so you could basically, if there was an enemy that wasn't expecting it or didn't know that you could jump through a window, you could get the drop on people. I did it so many times. But there was also a lot more bars on the windows in this early version of PUBG 2. And there was clothes laying on the ground. Look how laggy it is just picking things up. Uh, this was back before they had the network statistics on the screen. So you couldn't like uh, see what your ping was or anything like that. And a lot of times it would put you in foreign servers. I can't tell you how many times... I felt like my game was so laggy that I must be playing in like an Australian or an Asian or like a Pacific server. It was insane amounts of lag. I would see these streamers drag looting so fast and I was unable to drag loot fast because it took so long after I did the initial drag loot uh, for the item to show up in my inventory. I was like, why is this keep putting me overseas? Found out like a year later, it was a bug where players from certain regions were getting matched into regions on like the opposite side of the planet. So this could have been one of those matches where there was just a bunch of people mixed up, you know, me and some other Americans playing in some Philippine server or something crazy like that, or a Korean server or Australian server. I don't know. It was a free for all. And that's part of the reason the desync was so bad in PUBG when it first came out. I mean, every game has desync where you're like, that guy shot me before I even saw him come around the corner. That's just one of those things. Um, that's just one of the, look at, there's clothes on the ground. And I finally picked up a vest. I watched myself miss a vest. I still do that today. I'll be looking for something and I'll just walk right over it and won't even register in my brain. Uh, but yeah, I'm so glad. Look at how different the Red Bull cans look or the energy drinks. They actually look more like Red Bull. I think they might have had to change them because they were way too similar 
to the way Red Bull cans actually look in real life. Now they look like just a standard generic uh, energy drink can. <laughs> I got to make this character again for today's stream. Oh, if you're watching this video when it came out, I will be streaming PUBG later this afternoon. So make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on for that. Look at this. I'm trying to third person peek out this little window. I think I, I think at this point in the game, I actually heard some footsteps around me. I was trying to figure out where they were. So let's see what I have. I have a level one vest, a level two backpack, a bald head, and a shotgun. This was also back in the day when you couldn't hold your mouse or what would be the equivalent on a controller, the left trigger uh, to aim. Oh, a micro Uzi. Even the micro Uzi looks different. The 9 mil looks exactly the same, though. The painkiller bottle looks exactly the same. So you guys might see me doing a lot of third-person aiming because you had to tap to ADS. Uh, oh, there's the guy. He has no idea. He doesn't even have a vest. And this was back before bots. These are all real players. Every time, look how bad my aim was. I totally potatoed that guy, but still got him. Like, well, I didn't totally potato him, but the first part of it was definitely aimed way to the right. I don't even think I um, did the soft aim there. I think I just hip fired, but that's okay with the micro Uzi. All right, let's check out what the menu looks like here. The, the menu looks shockingly similar. As you can see, I wasn't drag looting. I was just right clicking on everything, and I completely forgot to pick up uh, his nine millimeter ammo. So at this point in time, I was a complete PUBG noob. I'd only been playing the game for maybe, I forget how long it took me to get my first win. I think it took about a week. So at this point, I was probably somewhere around a week in, give or take, of playing the game for several hours a day. And I don't think I had ever even streamed it. I just always record my gameplay uh, ever since I became a YouTuber and started a YouTube channel, I always, always record my gameplay uh, because you never know when something's going to go good. Funny thing is I've got a lot of friends who have uh, smaller YouTube channels and they're like, yeah, I, I start recording uh, when I want to make content for YouTube, uh, but nothing good ever happens. And then when I'm not recording, awesome stuff happens. And I'm like, you can't just wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going to do good at the video game today and get content for you. It doesn't work that way. It'd be great if it could, if it worked that way. You wake up, play for 30 minutes, get something for YouTube, upload it, and you've got your content for the day. But no, you got to put hours and hours of playing in unless you're on like a shroud type of level where you legitimately can just headshot people without using an aimbot. That's a different story. But for average players like me and the majority of people out there, you got to put in some serious time to this game if you want content. And uh, off subject, that's why it always grinds my gears. <laughs> Family Guy reference. Why it always grinds my gears when people comment and say, you only get easy lobbies with noobs. It's like, dude, I had to play for like 23 hours to get into that lobby and to get those kills, okay? You have no idea how many times I got owned. Just because I upload good gameplays doesn't mean I only play against noobs. It means I play enough to get that occasional win or eventually get into a lobby where maybe there are some noobs. But that ain't every lobby, bro. Sorry I play five times as much as you to get content for my YouTube channel. Now I just went off on a rant right there. I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> So notice I have my shotgun in slot one. I never do that now. You know, I know that your primary weapon should be in slot two because technically switching to slot two is faster. I don't know if you guys knew that, but pro tip, keeping your primary weapon in slot two is a faster swap. However, even though I know it's better, I always keep my primary weapon in slot one because my fingers are simply trained on the keyboard to press the number one for my primary and the number two for my secondary. And although I could retrain them, I really don't want to. I'll sacrifice several milliseconds uh, for a longer swap to my primary weapon. All right, look at this blue Dacia. That looks similar. It looks very similar to the one we have today, but not that similar. And look over there at the map on the other side. That looks totally different. Look at that mini map and look at the bridge. The bridge has no obstacles on it. What am I doing here? What, am, what 
What am I actually doing here? <laughs> oh, God. I almost got run over. This is hilarious. This is Average Sniper as a total noob to PUBG. My first week of playing PUBG. Oh, man. If only I had known about doing drive-bys. If only I had known about doing drive-bys. I could have swapped seats and killed so many people in the beginning. Imagine if you're basically like me. Imagine if you're like four years into a video game, you're pretty good at it, you're good enough to get chicken dinners on a fairly regular basis, um, and you can go up against other players that are good and, uh, you know, 50-50 chance at winning. You know, you're just that good at the game. Not like you're a pro or anything, but you're, you've played this game for four years, so you've got to be some kind of good at it. Imagine if you could go back in time to day one and use the knowledge that you have about the game to destroy all the new players, which would be everyone. Absolutely everyone. How OP would that be? And that is what Shroud does. He has a time machine. He gets really good at games for like four or five years, then he goes back in time and plays them. And you're just like, how is he so good at this game that just came out? Because he's been playing for four years. That's just one of my theories about how Shroud is so incredibly good at the games he plays. Time machine. <laughs> All right, check this out. We've got like no health. Look at those brake lights. So different. I don't even have a helmet on. Oh, it's because it got shot off. You see the lag there? Did you see the lag on picking that helmet up? That was insane. That was an insane amount of lag on picking that helmet up. All right, look at the, that looks different too. The little uh, painkiller bar. But anyway, guys, uh, that's pretty much what I did or how I felt um, when this game came out on console. Uh, I already knew how to play it. It was pretty much the same version as PC, except you had to use a controller for it, which I always did, by the way. I always did. There's a lot of people out there that are like, Average Sniper used a keyboard and mouse in PUBG on console. Never did. And if those people would just take literally 10 or 15 minutes out of their day, pick out any Xbox video or stream I've ever done, it's so easy to see how much I potato with that controller. If I was actually using a mouse on PUBG console, I'd have like 10 times more chicken dinners and 10 times more accuracy than I did back in the days when I actually played PUBG on console. But that's another, there's always going to be haters out there. You get a couple good shots or you get some lucky shots and for the rest of their life, they're going to remember you as that guy who lasered them and you're somehow cheating to do it. I mean, we all do it to a certain degree, but if you're going to accuse somebody of something, you should probably have some proof or at least take the time to look at the way they play the game and see they just got some lucky shots on you, you know? Funny. Oh, I love this this compound right up here on the hill out in the middle of nowhere. It's part of the reason Erangel is one of my favorite maps, man. It's just it's just so good. There's so much there's a perfect balance of cover, concealment, and open fields. Um it just works. I'd really love to see them uh, do some kind of hybrid like uh, Erangel map or or just simply a new Erangel map. Like keep Erangel the way it is. It's been improved a lot and I love it. Somehow they have managed not to ruin Erangel from the original iteration of it. Even with the Erangel remastered, it's still, in my opinion, the best PUBG map ever. Um, but if they could make another one similar to Erangel, it doesn't even have to be all grass and trees and fields. It could be something else. But I'm just talking about the combination of cover, concealment, and uh, um, open plains or fields or just open spaces. That'd be amazing. You know, I'm not a big fan of that new city map, the seasonal one that just came out called Haven. Not a fan of it at all. It's too small. Um, it's not a bad map by any means. It just doesn't fit my play style. I've never been into urban combat. I've always been more about sniping out in the open. Every time I see a red dot in this game, I think to myself, put it on your micro Uzi, but you can't. You can't put it on your micro Uzi. So what do we got here? We finally got a level two vest, a level three backpack, 
an ugly green level one helmet. This was back before they had skins in the game, guys. It actually took quite a while for them to start adding custom skins in. I think it was the better part of a year, eight or nine months um, that the game was in early access. I don't think they started adding skins in until the game came out of early access in December, December of 2017. Um, so there were no skins to buy, nothing like that. You just had to look at me. Look at me playing with that aim. Look at those horrible iron sights on the micro Uzi. I'm so glad they changed those. How can you see anything through that, man? I'm like, what's better here? Amy, oh, here's the bombing zone. Classic. Classic bombing zone. I don't think the... I think they actually buffed the bombing zones. They didn't really... At least the way I remember it, they didn't really seem to be that big of a deal. Um... And then all of a sudden, you were dying in them all the time. I think they secretly buffed the bombing zones uh, from how they used to be. This Dacia is... Looks like it's about to blow up. I wonder what the health is on it. You know what? My webcam is, is covering that up. Watch this. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Let's move me over here just a little bit so we can see what the Dacia health is and the fuel gauges and everything. That looks totally different too, uh, down there. Now it's weird because I'm too close to the character. I'm going to move myself back. We don't need, we don't need to see that stuff anyway. This is another place that I like that hasn't changed very much. Uh, these buildings, what did we used to call these buildings? Uh, the F all buildings, because they're really big but they hardly have any loot in them. And that's one thing that's remained consistent. There's a pair of pants. You know, there's a pair of pants. Hashtag PUBG clothes. <laughs> Hashtag bring back PUBG clothes. <laughs> bring back loot clothes. That was the only skins you'd be able to find, guys. It's random clothes you picked up. And they weren't really any different from the clothes you had on. I wonder when they designed this game, who was thinking, like, let's put random pairs of pants and boots and shirts on the map you know people will really be interested in the aesthetic look they can get while playing the game you know instead of thinking let's do microtransactions with skins somebody was actually like let's just put random clothes in they can just wear like once as they play the game no <laughs> that was just annoying how annoying is it too when you go to pick up a gun and there's like too many clothes around it and you end up picking up the clothes instead of the gun you know, I guess if you use the menu to loot, it wouldn't be that big a deal. But if you're trying to pick stuff up off the ground fast, like how many times do you land and there's another guy close to you and you just spam the F button or the X button on controller or the square button, I think it is on PS4, uh, to just try and pick something up. And you and, and what if you just ended up picking up like a new hat and or a new shirt and, <laughs> and some boots? And it was so infuriating to be killed by a guy because there were too many clothes laying around blocking the weapons that you wanted to pick up and stuff like that. Probably wouldn't have been a big deal if they didn't put the clothes so close to the other loot, but they still do that. They still do that to this day. They will put um, like a backpack with like a gun and ammo under it or a vest under it or something. It's like, dude, just spread the loot out. You know, we're not here to play... We're not here to play hide and seek with the loot. We're here to play the game. All right, at this point, look at how small that circle is getting. What am I doing with my life at this point in the game? I've got a micro Uzi and a shotgun, and we're 21 alive. I don't know what phase it is because they don't have phases, but I would, I would based on what little I just saw of that circle on the map, I would say we're probably somewhere around phase four if we were to compare this early access PUBG with the modern PUBG we have now in 2021. We're probably around phase four. Uh, what happened here? Yeah, okay, so that would I think that would be more like phase three pushing in and phase four would be the next one. The circle movement, that's another thing that's changed so much. Uh, from the early access to now. And if you're wondering what I'm doing just sitting here in this shed, uh, I think at this point I got a phone call from my friend Thorfinn. Uh, if I remember correctly, 
he had some kind of computer question or something like that for me. And I basically told him, I was like, yeah, let me call you back uh, after I die. I didn't even take it into consideration that I might actually win the match. <laughs> I was like, let me let me call you back after my, uh, after my game is over, after I die. I think I actually said that. Um, and I think right there was when I was talking to him on the phone. Or I could have just been being a dirty shed camper. Now, what I'm doing right here, I would never actually do that now. Um, no, I will still camp in a shed for sure, but I wouldn't stand there with my head exposed, not wiggling back and forth. Ah, that's another thing. If I could go back in time, I would get so many headshots on players who thought their head couldn't be seen and weren't moving back and forth, just like I'm doing right now. I mean, don't get me wrong. At this point in time, everybody in this whole game was basically a noob, you know? I mean, the game had only been out for a couple weeks. It was my first week of playing, and I had been playing a lot of H1Z1 prior uh, to this. And H1Z1 was really hard, but it really got me ready for this game. This game felt like H1Z1 because it had a battle royale. It's a battle royale, just like H1Z1 is, but it was not only uh, just third person and unrealistic shooting mechanics look at that look at how that blue circle looks man it's now it envelops the whole map but basically this game was a more realistic version of h1z1 and a lot of people ask me how i got into third person on PUBG. you have h1z1 to blame for that and the fact that first person mode was not available when PUBG first came out for at least four or five months i think i really got hardcore into playing third person mode even though i had been a hardcore first person shooter guy for a long time um, and I really like, I'll say it, I love the casual aspect of third person. I don't think that every time you play, you have to try and be sweaty or competitive. There are some people out there that live for that. Um, but other people like me that work a full-time job and try to find time to stream and make content, we don't want to have a sweaty time every time we play. I don't have enough time I do get to play a lot more than most people. I get to play for at least four hours a day on any day that I want to. But I don't I don't play for 12 hours a day like some of the pros do. I just don't have time to put in that much work and get that good, which is part of the reason I call myself Average Sniper, you know, because I just want to be able to relate to all you guys out there and show you that, yeah, sometimes I will stream for four and five hours and not have one chicken dinner. But by God, we're going to have fun and we're going to get unstressed because in the end, for me, that's what gaming is all about. Gaming is different for everybody, but for me, it's a big stress reliever and streaming has even relieved more stress being able to chill with such an awesome community. There's always going to be trolls and haters and whatnot, but that's why we have the ban button. My ban list quickly approaching, I don't know, three or four thousand people. <laughs> All just bans, too. All people just being dicks for no reason. Sometimes I might hit the ban button a little quick, but I've never hit the ban button on somebody that wasn't being rude or disrespectful. So if you're on my ban list, you definitely did something to deserve it. But at the same time, I get people that email me all the time and they're like, dude, I'm sorry what I said in the chat. Can you unban me? And I'm like, sure. No hard feelings. I have no hard feelings to anybody, but I try to keep toxicity and negativity out of my chat. And I do that by using the ban button on people that are being toxic. So if you're watching this video and you're somebody that's been banned and uh, you want to be able to chat again, uh, just uh, hit me up on the Discord or on Facebook. Or you can even go to my About section and send me an email. That'd probably be the easiest way is just to send me an email. Go to my About section, shoot me an email message, and let me know. I'll take you off the ban list. But if you're just going to email me uh, to get off the ban list just so you can say something shitty in chat again it's not going to be worth it because you'll just get insta banned again <laughs> and nobody will even care wow look i got an m16 i finally dropped the shotgun and got an m16 i don't know if you guys know this but shotguns were basically completely useless um back in the early days of PUBG. and correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure we only have one kill yeah i just saw it up there one kill and we're down to 16 alive who knew that this type of gameplay could be so interesting? But spoiler alert, I think I finished, I think I think I end up with six kills. It was pretty crazy. Um, I don't want to spoil it anymore for you, but 
Yeah, we'll just go from here. Still running around with a level one helmet, level two vest. Notice there's no indicators on the bottom of the screen either to tell me what helmet, vest, and backpack I have. I think that was something they added in later, maybe with the addition of first person, since you couldn't look at your character anymore to tell what you had. They had to add some kind of heads up display or HUD uh, down at the bottom of the screen to tell you uh, what type of helmet, vest, and backpack you had, since you couldn't technically look at your character. All right, so we got an M16, and we just got a four times scope for it. And uh, I am using third person to my advantage. That's that's one thing I've always felt comfortable with, uh, and I think it's because of playing H1Z1, is understanding uh, the angles and the way third person works. Because a lot of people will be like, third person is cheating, anybody can do it. But I have plenty of friends I play with that are primarily first person players that have such a difficult time adjusting to the third person style of gameplay because you have to understand that enemies can see you when you can't see them. And you have to understand the angles that they can see you from and just assume there's probably a guy there. So I don't want to turn sideways or put my back to that guy or leave myself exposed in any way. Uh, but in first person, it wouldn't matter because the guy would actually have to peek you know, to see you. But in third person, it's all about covering your angles and making sure you can't be shot from directions that otherwise you would not have to worry about in first person mode. Um, at least not have to worry about somebody seeing you without you being able to see them as well. And that's the biggest problem with third person is that you have the ability sometimes to see people that can't see you, but it works both ways. Uh, there also are plenty of times I've gotten killed because an enemy could watch me from behind a wall and I couldn't see him. So I totally, totally understand why some people prefer first person. I even understand why people get toxic about third person because in a, in a way it can take the competitive nature out of the game um, when you get killed by someone that has an advantage because they can see you way before you can see them. But... I'm okay with that, which is why I'm okay with third person. I get third person killed all the time. It doesn't even make me mad because I do it to people all the time too. It's just a different game mode and you just have to accept that's how it is. And I have so much fun streaming third person and a lot of people in my streams have said they actually prefer the stream in third person because they can see more of the environment and what's going on and it's just more fun, at least for me. Now, if you're playing this game competitively, you should probably play first person because it's going to work out better for you. You're not going to have to worry about getting killed just because somebody could see you and you couldn't see them. All right, let's get back on the gameplay. We're, we're like uh, 27 minutes in and in the top 10. And still, I believe there's only one kill. If you look at the map at the bottom right, you'll see that I'm right outside the zone and I have to move a little bit to the east. Um to get in the zone. So I decide to jump over this balcony. Thank God you could actually jump over certain things and uh, check this building out. Do you see how weird that was that the door opened toward me instead of inside? I don't think that happens anymore. I think the doors open if like, like you push them, but you don't pull them open anymore. That's another weird thing I just noticed. Now we've only got nine alive. Final circle here. And I am using the uh, M16 on single fire mode, but I also have this micro Uzi for close quarters combat, level one helmet, level two vest, level three backpack, hardly any ammo for either gun. I am literally just playing a survival game right now. And I am such a noob here, just sitting in a position where my head could get sniped from anywhere. I definitely didn't fully understand or comprehend the third person angles at this point because this is pure luck that I'm still alive. If I was to try this strategy and play like such a noob right now in 2021, ooh, I would get smoked. I would get absolutely smoked. Now this guy... Look how slow my reactions were there. This was one of the, not the only lucky thing that happens to me in this game, but look at my health. That guy completely potatoed me. And that actually happened a lot in the early days of PUBG because you have to remember, everyone was a noob. So even though we're playing on PC, look, I have 30 bandages. What is wrong with me? Even though we're playing on PC, um, you run into tons of people who just don't, have their sensitivity down yet, don't understand or and don't 
I fully understand the movement system yet. Just a ton of things, you know, that contribute to people being noobs. And it basically just boils down to not being used to the game. So even though there's probably some experienced shooters in here, everybody playing PUBG was a total noob to it. And it actually attracted a lot of people that weren't into regular shooters in the first place. Look at that, three kills. Oh man, that guy's reaction was so slow to move. Now we're shooting at this guy, Battlefield style. Did he get away? I think he got away. So basically, everybody was noobs, and you could... Oh, that was sick. I forgot all about that. That guy was hiding so good. That reminds me, too, if you put your graphic settings on low in early PUBG, it basically took away the grass and the bushes, so people would think they were safe camping in a bush or in the grass. All you had to do was turn your graphic settings on low, and you'd be able to see all of them. It was hilarious, just hilarious. They fixed that, though, obviously. That was a huge game-breaking bug. I always kept my graphics turned up to medium and high, though, just because I enjoyed better graphics, you know? I never seemed to have too much trouble seeing people in bushes in the first place. 1v1, guys. I am making a move out here. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea where the other guy is. I just decide to go for it. So you can hear how excited I was there. Hopefully you could hear that. I increased the volume a little bit there so you could hear my original reaction. I mean, look at look at this end screen right here, man. Look at this end screen right here. This is so different from our normal end screen. We up oh, it's done. I guess the video I, I guess the video is done. So that was early access uh PUBG guys. I hope you enjoyed it. That was so great uh talking about PUBG again. Uh their early access PUBG. It's been almost 4 years. That was the first chicken dinner I ever got. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you tune in for some PUBG tonight on the stream. If you're watching this video on the day it came out, if you're not watching this video on the day it came out, I'm probably streaming PUBG anyway. I usually only don't stream PUBG on Sundays and we and Wednesdays I usually take a day off, but I'll even stream on Wednesdays too if I don't have anything else going on. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video or the next live stream. Have a wonderful day and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Later, everyone.